Hello guys, Winston here, and today, here, albeit briefly, is the workshop of DIY Engineering's David Johnson. David and I have been collaborating on what I believe will become the future of telekinetic alcohol delivery, the Jedi Force Beer Tap. My portion of this project centered around creating a suitable beer tap handle. Given that the project was Star Wars themed, a lightsaber seemed to be a logical form for the tap handle to take. This is what I came up with. It's a design loosely based on Luke Skywalker's first lightsaber, an unquestionably iconic piece from the Star Wars universe. It's primarily made of ash, walnut, and bubinga, but to see how I made it, we're going to have to go back to my workshop in New Jersey. When I first thought about how I would make a lightsaber hilt, I considered making it out of a series of stacked discs. This would be really easy to machine, but it wasn't a good fit for the lightsaber shape we were going for. Because of the single dominant cylinder that makes up the body of Luke's lightsaber, visual continuity of the wood grain would have been lost. Plus, a stacked disc design wouldn't give very much flexibility in how internal cavities could be machined to accommodate the mounting hardware, reinforcements, and channels for running electronics. And so, I came to terms with the fact that I would have to use two-sided machining. Under any other circumstance, I would have loved to take my time learning this technique, but I was under the gun for this project and I had to get it right the first time. To give you an idea of the timeline I was working with, I met up with David for the first time on a Sunday. The next day, I flew home and started catting up a design. Tuesday, I finished up my CAD models and developed most of my cam tool pads, and from Wednesday until I flew back to Orlando on Saturday, I was machining non-stop. Yeah, it was pretty rough. But going back to the need for two-sided machining, I wanted to be able to create and cut a design that could do a few things. One, integrate a coupling nut for interfacing with a 3 8 by 16 threads on the beer tap. Two, have a mounting point to interface with an RC push rod that would be actuated by the force, also known as a linear actuator. And three, have room to run cables through for any electronics in the hilt, like LEDs, to light up the token length of the lightsaber blade that we would include. Not only would two-sided machining afford me the flexibility to implement all of this, but it would also allow me to create a nearly seamless body with respect to the grain of the wood, assuming I did my machining correctly. The basic gist of the design was as follows. A lower section of the hilt with a cutout for the hex nut, brass square stock in which I would machine a small clevis, and a 3 8 inch square run for the wiring. The middle coupling section would revert to a layered disc construction to give the effect of a textured grip and an upper section of the hilt that would accommodate a 1 inch diameter pipe that would serve as the blade part of the lightsaber. Through all three sections, I would run quarter inch threaded rod to provide a little more rigidity in the length of the hilt. By the way, David bought a cheap licensed toy that I used as a reference, which maintains some of the aesthetics of the original Graflex flash gun derived prop, but isn't constrained by its functional requirements. This textured grip ring on the toy, for example, corresponds to a clamp that holds two halves of a Graflex flash gun together. No Jedi in his right mind would knurl a flexible strip of metal that's used in tension. So yeah, I'm similarly deviating a bit from the original prop's design. If my lack of faithfulness to the canonical aesthetic disturbs you, I apologize, but not really. I'm going to save the deep dive into two-sided machining and my cam toolpathing strategy for another video in the near future. But the basic gist is that in order to machine these parts, I needed to be able to precisely locate each part after I flipped it over. And the best way to do that was with indexing pins. You also need your stock material to be perfectly flat, otherwise it'll throw off your coordinate system when you flip it over. The material I was using was a hunk of ash that had been resawed in half. The cut was good, but not perfect, so I faced off all of my pieces to 22 millimeters in thickness. My lightsaber was nominally 38 millimeters in diameter, so 22 gave me a little extra margin to work with. I arranged the left half of my lightsaber hilt to fit within a 4x8 inch footprint and cut the inside features first, since cutting the outside contours would substantially weaken my stock material. I only used two tools for these operations, 8th inch flat and 8th inch ball end mills. Using the 8th inch flat end mill, I roughed out most of the material with an adaptive clear and also cleaned up the flat bottom faces and vertical walls. Then I switched to the ball end mill to clean up any sloping sides. After these operations were complete, I flipped the part over, indexing them on a pair of aluminum pins. Then I completed the cutout of the outside features of my part. I repeated this for the right half of the lightsaber shell, which was simply the mirrored image of the first parts. Then I cut out the discs that would couple my lower and upper hilt segments and also increase the lightsaber's overall length. Once these were cleaned up with some 220 grit sandpaper, I glued them together and let them dry. In the meantime, I cut out some accent pieces to add more details to the hilt. First up with the knobs and protrusions on the hilt. I just carved some basic shapes using 2D profiles.
Then I got to the hand grips on the lower portion of the hilt. Instead of doing these with both a square and a ball end mill, I just used the square end mill with fine step downs to approximate the required shape. It would save me time and the features could be easily smoothed out with some sandpaper later. In order to get these to sit flat on the handle, I wrapped some sandpaper around a cylinder and used it to create a concave profile on the bottom of my hand grips. Using some wood glue and some masking tape, I attached the grips to the hilt and let them set up overnight. A faster way to do this would have been to use a dab of super glue in conjunction with the wood glue, but because I had no features to index off of, I needed a longer set time to eyeball and dial in the position of my hand grips. I took a piece of brass stock and machined out the fork that would attach the beer tap handle to an RC push rod. I also milled out a 0.21 inch hole in the top so I could tap it for quarter 20. I cut a length of threaded rod and cut a slot into one end so I could turn it with a screwdriver. Then I screwed it down through the spine of my lightsaber into the brass stock. I also glued the coupling nut into the bottom of the lightsaber with some E6000 and fitted a little end cap to the bottom of my lightsaber that was more or less flush with the bottom of the hex nut. At this point I was out of time. I had to fly out to Orlando to deliver my lightsaber to David for integration, so I quickly wiped on a mineral oil finish on my lightsaber and packed it up. And no, I didn't have to resort to any Jedi mind tricks to sneak this weapon past the TSA on my carry-on. To see the Jedi Force beer tap in action and learn more about how it works, check out David's video on the DIY engineering channel. Not only did he fabricate the physical structure of the Jedi Force beer tap, but he also did all the electronics for it as well. Due to my schedule, I was unfortunately not able to stay and see the project through to its conclusion, but David put in a good amount of work on his end to complete the beer tap, and the finished product looks amazing. And that wraps up my very first official collaboration, and I'm thrilled I got to check that off my YouTube bucket list. There was a lot of information I omitted about the lightsaber build due to time constraints, so keep an eye out on my channel for a more technical breakdown of my machining process in a future video. But in the meantime, I want to thank you guys all very much for watching, and I'll be back with another CNC-related project in a week or two.